So a while ago, and I mean a long time ago by today's standards, like way back in 2020, we tested out a 3950X on an A320 motherboard. And we found out, although it does in fact work, and it works kind of okay, <laughs> like don't try to do anything crazy with it and it'll just work, but you lose out on a lot of performance by running a 3950X with an A320 board, obviously. Like it had a four pin power connector and it still got the VRMs to over 200 degrees open air Fahrenheit, uh, well over 100 degrees Celsius. So today I have something even better. I have a B450 motherboard and not just any old crappy B450 motherboard. I have a Asus Prime B450MA, which uh, doesn't mean much to you probably, but it is the cheapest garbage tier B450 motherboard that I could get my hands on. And what makes it so bad is it has no cooling solution on the VRMs whatsoever. They are completely exposed. So only cooling that they get is passive radiation. And then on top of that, I have built Benchy, a custom loop water cool, 280 millimeter radiator. It has a, a pump on it and it, it should cause it to get even hotter because there's no fan near those VRMs. So I'm gonna run it stock and see what kind of temperatures those VRMs get up to. And then I'm gonna overclock it and see if we can't kill them. I got this board for like $33 off of eBay like four months ago. And my plan was to use it with a 3950X. So if you wanna see this with a 3950X, like this video 50 times, I don't know. Uh, I would like to do it, but I, I have to pull my 3950X back out of my main system and I just don't feel like doing that. But I will do it for content. So like and subscribe and I'll, I'll pull it out. And if this board somehow survives today, then we'll do that. Oh, yeah, I, I had a really nice thermal gun when a like thermal camera when we were doing it with the 3950X and the A320 motherboard. All I have today is a Harbor Freight uh, point and see how hot it gets temperature gun. So hopefully that's acceptable for what we're doing because there's probably not any kind of hardware monitor that is monitoring the temperature of those VRMs, but uh, we'll find out. Let's go ahead and run Cinebench, just to show that it is working um, as it should. It is, after all, a pretty spicy Ryzen 5000. I, I already ran it on it, just to make sure that it wasn't gonna immediately turn off. So hardware info, or hardware monitor is showing 140 watts package draw. Like, that's pretty usual for an eight core Ryzen of any generation. So we got a 5700 score. It's actually really good. God, I remember back when, I mean, you could probably see it on here, a 1700X scored way lower. It's almost up to a, a, a Threadripper, like an old Threadripper, uh, 16 core first gen Threadripper. So that's, man, that's single core performance of Ryzen 5000. So what kind of temperature are we looking at here? So already they're up to 105 degrees, 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, it's about, it's about 40 degrees Celsius. So let's hit it with Prime 95. This is completely stock, by the way. I haven't messed with anything yet. Like out of the box, put it in the motherboard, flick it on, enable XMP, which is actually really surprising. It's running at like 4,100 megahertz on the RAM, which is really good. All right, let's just blast it. Small FFTs. You can immediately hear the fans ramp up of my, my sweet AIO that I have designed and engineered specifically for Benchy. <laughs> so what are we seeing? Really good package temperature. Like it's staying below 70 Celsius. So that's really good. We're using a, a really cheap borrow uh, CPU block, uh, a Corsair 280 radiator, and then uh, a Corsair pump, like an older Corsair pump and two 140 not pulse with modulated fans. They're just like 1300 RPM static fans. That's all I had lying around. So yeah, it's staying down there. It's pulling 140 watts, 100% CPU utilization. It, you can tell that the all core is hanging out, but it's, it's just hanging out there. Like, 
I don't know if that's a good all core for one of these because I haven't really messed with it yet, but I'm pretty sure you can all core one of these a little higher than that. So I, I don't think it's all coring as high as it should, but this is right out of the box. So let's go ahead and check the temperature on this. Okay, so we're getting over 200 degrees Fahrenheit here on the VRMs. Let's just scan it, see if I can't get a max. 212, 213, 220, 222, 225, 200, 230. So 228 degrees, cell, or degrees Fahrenheit. That is over 100 degrees C, I'm pretty sure. There's nothing in hardware monitor telling you about this temperature though. Like, I don't see anything in here about it. Still running the test. Let's see if I can't open um, hardware info. Maybe hardware info says something about the temperature of the VRMs. Are we losing? We're not losing really any CPU clock speed yet. Holy sh um. So we're up to 250 degrees on the VRMs. I have not overclocked this yet at all. Do we have a temperature anywhere in any kind of monitored system? I don't see any monitored temperature showing you this VRM temperature. And this is insane. Like, did it fail? Oh, you see it, you see it. So see where it got up to temperature. I don't know where, I can't monitor the temperature of those VRMs, but it dropped down there. Let's go ahead and uh, reset clear min max here. Cause I really wanna see the wattage numbers. Last time hardware info was the one to tell me that something was going on. You see it dropping down to 31 watts right now. It's doing this to conserve itself. It's doing this to save itself, really. It's really crazy because Prime 95 is not picking up on this. Like it's not saying that there's anything wrong. It just thinks that something else is happening, I guess. This is far more responsive than the A320 board was because the A320 board with the 3950X would get hot but it wouldn't do this kind of throttling. So yeah, like the external temperature on these is all 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, you can see 250, well, 248, but I'm rounding up. Wow, it is, this is far more responsive than it was with the A320 motherboard. And it might have something to do with this having absolutely no fan. Gabe, don't be stupid and touch it. Oh, it's hot. Um, yeah, so you can see it's just throttling it. That's really cool. Like it took much longer with the A320 board to see this kind of bouncing up and down to conserve itself. Can you look, it's passing tests. It has no idea. I really wonder if in gaming, and I really, I really doubt if in gaming you could see this kind of, this kind of load, but you, look at that, 500 megahertz. That is so bad. <laughs> Can you imagine when you're gaming and it goes from being at like four and a half gigahertz to going to 500 megahertz, the kind of lag that you would experience? Now, granted, I don't know if gaming can bring these kinds of temperatures to the VRMs. So yeah, this is what it does stock. It's just bouncing between 140 watts and then dropping down to 30 watts and then going back up to 140 watts. So yeah, it, it's, it, it's not happy. And there's nothing, it's not telling me anything here. Like, None of these say red, like none of these are red. If any of these were red saying that there was something wrong, it would help you diagnose something related to having overheated VRMs, but there's nothing showing anything here. Let's just go all in and overclock it. I'm pretty sure Ryzen 5000 can uh, actually clock really high. I'm, I say really high in like a comparative sense to Ryzen 3000 that didn't really want to clock at all. Let's just set a core ratio of like four nine. I'm pretty sure this should work. Like. I have very little doubt that this will work. And this is an this is auto voltage. So there's a very good chance that it will crash. I know that PBO2 will boost this thing higher than 4.9 uh, in a single core. So 4.9 all core is, doesn't seem completely unrealistic. And we're also gonna be juicing the crap out of it. So it, it should be stable, although overvolting it pretty bad. But I wanna overvolt it because I want to put as much strain on those VRMs as possible. And temperatures, did they, did they cool off a bit? Cause they're idling. They cooled off a bit. They're still up in the 180-ish Fahrenheit department. It's not good. Let's go ahead and launch Cinebench back up. <laughs> it crashed immediately. <laughs> I have very little doubt that this will work. Very interesting that it crashed immediately, but it went right back into Windows.
Like did Windows crash? I think I'm gonna go with a lighter overclock here. I'm not trying to like get this like tuned for everyday driver. Like I'm just hitting it hard so I can see if I can't kill these VRMs. Like I really wanna see this motherboard stop working so that I don't have to stick my 3950X in here and then accidentally kill it somehow by it freaking out and killing that CPU instead. This, if I kill it, I, might, I have a chance of warrantying it. <laughs> AMD, what were you doing? Uh, <laughs> uh, nothing. <laughs> Maybe I should just unlock PBO limits. I'm gonna set a 90 degrees limit. I don't think it's gonna get up to 90 degrees. Like, I'm just gonna set this and uh, that should be, that should be enough. <laughs> a 200 over. I really think that that's how PBO should have been from the very beginning. Like PBO, uh, and Ryzen 3000 should have been a, a setting where you could say, hey, I want you to boost to this much instead of it being a weird magical number that you couldn't set. <laughs> Unless you want to do an all core overclock, which was, which was dumb because you could almost never hit a all core of what your single core could do. So it's like, it just, it felt so bad. All right, so if you can see, we're getting uh, five gigahertz all core here. Well, single core bursts, so uh, that's just PBO too. I just, I love that <laughs> right out of the box, being able to do that. It might not be stable, but we're, we're at this point, I just want to see more Watts. God, that's crazy. Why is it drawing less Watts? What are you doing? God, we got an even worse Cinebench score. <laughs> Man, this is not looking good for me. It's really strange that I'm having such a hard time getting us to draw more power than stock when I'm manually setting, oh, there we go, there we go. 170 watts, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we're talking. I'm just bad at Cinebench apparently. God, 170 watts. This thing should be cooking. See how long it takes to start throttling at this. <laughs> it cannot maintain this. Also, what's our temperature look like? 82 degrees? Not bad. Not bad, Ryzen 5000. Not, not, not bad, Zen 3. There it is. There it is. Yeah, so at about 250 degrees Fahrenheit, it, it, won't, it won't do it. <laughs> it just stops. It cuts the power to it. I'm surprised it's not crashing. Yeah, guys, if you ever uh, if you ever wondered what it looked like to be motherboard bottlenecked, at least in Prime 95, uh, there it is. Shoot, I really wanted there to be more carnage than this. <laughs> yeah, I just don't think I can get this CPU to draw more than 180 watts. Like, I'm, I'm getting it to draw 170 watts. I don't think I can get it to draw more than 180 watts. So, I know for a fact that my 3950X will draw like 200 watts plus, like I think I've gotten it up to like 250 watts before, like overclocking, like manually overclocking it. So if you wanna see me drop that CPU in this board and see if I can't kill these VRMs, you know, get me 50 likes, I'll make it happen 100%. Unfortunately, I think it's gonna be the same story as this CPU where we're just running into it throttling immediately as it gets to that 250 degrees Fahrenheit mark, but I'm really surprised. Like it's it's acting exactly the same as the A320 motherboard where it would get up to a temperature and then just kill the performance once it got up to that temperature. And then when it killed the performance, it would cool off a bit and then go right back up to what it was doing before, fine. And then it would just repeat that cycle over and over again. I don't know if, you know, in a real world situation that you would see that, maybe if you were like rendering, you could see it like your render time would hit like a, a speed bump and then continue. Honestly, I'm, I'm surprised that it's not worse. Like I'm surprised that it's not shutting off. I mean, I, I don't know what else, like it, it could just kill the board, but I, I the board is designed to protect itself. You know, most parts nowadays are designed to protect themselves. So that's really gonna do it for today, guys. If you, uh, like I said, if you want to see that 3950X in this board, get me some likes, make sure you're subscribed for it, and have a great day.